Hello gentle people, Jeff here, welcome back to the channel. Um, I hope you didn't mind that we skipped a week. Um, I was uh, somewhere else. Um, I carved but I could not really record. Well, I could have, but I didn't brought my camera with me. Uh, I went up climbing some mountains in Sweden. It was really great. Uh, but yet I carved a lot in the past two weeks. Uh, I just didn't felt like anything uh, was worth making a video about. Uh, I carved, uh, so I will show you, I've carved some, some uh, little house, a uh, little gnome house, and I've done this little uh, Swedish style super, uh, well, super Swedish house uh, that I've uh, got from the Carve a Wall of Gnome book from Nikki Rees. Uh, I was super inspired for that. Uh, there's a recurrent user Grim Reaper who asked me if I could also make a tutorial about my little Mjolnir that I've done uh, that you can see on my uh, video from Hoonin and Mugen. Uh, I've done two here. I have done two more but they broke and I... Uh, well... I will not make a tutorial out of that because it's a pain to carve. Seriously, there's so much wood to remove. That's the type of thing that would be super easy to do with a saw uh, or a bench or something. Uh, so yeah, sorry man, I will not uh, make a tutorial out of that because 90% of it is just removing wood uh, and then you just carve little lines in there. So yeah, it's just like, I don't think that will make good content. <laughs> Uh, I carved uh, more little Vikings. I've done this uh, Rus style one uh, with the pointy hat and a big shield and things. Uh, I've done uh, this guy like he's some sort of an adventurer and he has a little bag and you know. Uh, yeah, I've done different things. I've done a new knight that maybe I will make a third a lot of it. This guy here. I kind of like him, he's super dirty uh, because he went uh, you know, to a fight or whatever. Uh, I even made uh, this guy I haven't painted, but I was like, well, let's take my little guy, but make a like Caven Coast style fisherman. So yeah, I've done that. And then recently it was like, okay, so what could I do to make a tutorial? And that's what we're doing today, as you might have seen in the thumbnail, obviously. But uh, yeah, we'll make some sort of like Viking Lord Jarl thing with a, a big cloak uh, on one side. Uh, I've made this, I carved this one at the top of a mountain. That was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and I've made this one two days ago, I think, or something. Uh, this one doesn't have a helmet. He's just like with a little ponytail braided in the back. So that's what we will do today. Um, I hope you enjoy. Uh, that is, the fact that there is a cloak covering half the body makes it super easy because you just basically have to cut half of the carving. Uh, you cut half of the carving in half, if it makes any sense. Uh, because you don't have to carve that side, apart from a couple of lines, right? Um, so yeah, this is what we're about to do right now. And I will stop rambling about things and we will just jump into it. So we have our block of wood, as usual. Um, it's always the same measurement that I have. So it's uh, three by three by eight. Or one and a quarter by one and a quarter by three and a quarter, I think. Something like this. And I'll start with some lines, as usual. So I use my finger and then I put my pencil where I want to be. And then I press on the wood. And then it gives me a straight line. But then I do that on all sides. There we go. I always have one side that is really bad looking like this, so it's usually in the back. So this will be the front of the character. And I draw as much as I can, just a middle line here. I have some sort of a center around there. And since it's in the front, I will join these two lines that I've done. That gives me an idea about the size of the head, like this. So this wood will go away. So here about an inch down, 
I same technique again. I put my pencil where I want to be, and then I draw perpendicular. That will be the shape of the head, but also where the shoulders will be. So that's the front. About I don't know a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter, something below. I made a mark and then I join the edges. That will be the bottom of the beard and in this case probably also where the, the cloak will be. doesn't need to be super precise just to give you some ideas. And then I always do right arm guys probably because I'm right-handed and it's easier to carve in that direction. I could go on the other side but I don't know. I always end up going there. So here, depending on the size of the sword you want to be, I usually just go in uh, some sort of like 45 degree, 40 degree, I'm not exactly sure. I always make it bigger than what I want to be, because we remove wood. I make these two lines and then where's the join here? I go perpendicular like that. Just a little bit, two lines like this, so that's the sword guard, so that's the hand. And then here about, I don't know, a couple of millimeters next to it. I draw another line for the arm. And then in the back, pretty much at the same distance, same height, I draw a line and then I just do something like this. It's just a guideline for the head. And then from here, with this line, we'll do a big thing like this somehow for the cloak and then I think I'll go join it like like so. So the other arm is completely hidden behind it. Then in the back probably something like that. Get an angle. So we'll have the butt still probably around here. Maybe we could even have a leg or something like that. So this whole side is just cloak. So that's really, really removing half the problem of this carving, really. And we could go fancy and make a little uh, little thing to hold on this side, or, yeah, we'll see. So here we go. I hope you have strapped your knife, and uh, that's it for the lines. So we can start digging into it. I always start the same way, as you might have seen with my other guys now. On both sides, I will, from the line here, I will swoop cut all the way to the top to remove wood. As you go ar about where the line is, but not exactly where it is, just like, I don't know, I leave a couple of millimeters like that. Once again, doesn't have to be that precise. Same thing on the other side. Basically what you want to end up with is somehow a shape that is like this. See, almost similar on both sides. And from here I do a V-cut in a 45-ish degree angle on the corners here, on both sides. Like so. And from here we go back on the side and I do a couple of cuts. This basically creates a stop cut for the shoulders. And then I remove the wood. Like so. And I'll do the, uh, the same thing on the other side. And I just check if it's some sort of symmetrical, which is absolutely not right now. So I remove more wood. See, so yeah, it's it's okay. We will round that up after anyway. From here, one V cut where the beard is ending, right there, like so. And then I join. Remember that with a Vika the line is in the middle, so I go 45 degree, a couple of millimeters outside on each side. 
You can do more than one cut, it's fine. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. So we have the shape of the face now. Good. <coughs> From here, uh, we can, because I sometimes forget, uh, we will just remove a lot of wood in the back so that will be done. Basically, you want to flatten that part. Try to be like parallel to this line in the middle that we've done. And then I remove that part too. I hope the camera is not shaking too much. If I put pressure on the table, it kind of moves. Okay, so we have a flat back. Great. From here, uh, let's go and do the arm. So the line that we have here, I usually put my piece of wood on the table because it's easier. Then we go along the line here and along the line with the sword. Oops, I went a bit bendy, but that's okay. Same thing at the bottom here. Okay. And then changing the grip. If you go on the other end, it could be easier even because you could carve like this, but I don't know, I always go on this side. So changing the grip, always remember to not have the knife go inside the line that you've done. Try to always keep the tip of the knife following that line as much as you can. Take some practice. I'm not uh, that great at it either, but if you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's a uh, there's no cut inside. Anyway, then we can remove. You can go as deep as you want. The deeper you go, the more shadow it will create, which is good. Okay. And from here, we remove some wood like this. Good. We'll remove more later. Change side. Remove the wood. So what I usually do here, because I really hate starting from the grain here. I don't know why. I've, I uh, a couple of times I broke the carving, and one time I also cut myself. So I usually just go from the middle and I swoop in, remove the wood, then I remove that part, flatten it up. Then I go in again, back and forth. I just find it a bit uh, safer. Okay. So we have some depth here. That's good. Um, let's go with the line of the cloak. Uh, just go right here. And for now, we'll just remove just a little bit. We'll stop cut and then we carve through it. We can remove more later. I just want to make the shape. And then same thing here. Goes all the way to the bottom. If you do it with a straight line like this, it's obviously way easier to cut because you don't have to. You know, It's literally this, the same as my blade, so I can just come in it and cut like this against the grain. Okay, good. So we have the line here. Uh, let's go in the back here. So let's take the arm, straight line, and then the other line we have for the hand. Just a little stop cut, and then carve through it like that. So then again switch side and I remove these to give my blade some place to go in. Come back in here, cut that. Then all the way through the line. Okay. Could have went straight away with this, but I find it makes a cleaner cut when I 
remove the wood below because it creates these split but then you can just come in and fix it good okay and from here we'll continue the cloak on this little stop cut carve through it from below All right. good and then this line here was pretty straight also All right. so this might be tricky here but you can depending on the blade that you have you can just swoop in and try to go and remove the wood create some depth okay so will you have a butt yeah, not exactly okay just flatten that side here one big cut and we'll flatten that side a bit too because it's way too sharp okay okay now let's uh, flatten that so but let's make uh, him a little chest so I will make a big V cut in the middle like this bang okay so that gives him a bit a big chest we can flatten that part a bit fix the cloak okay Then from here, uh, I will make a stop cut following the angle of the sword here, just for me to be able to uh, remove that wood. So I'm not pushing, I'm doing a rotating motion following the wood here. And then I end up in the same angle as the sword, because if you go straight, you will cut in the sword and that's not what you want. Just removing all the way, it's sort of flat in there. Okay. So there's a couple of uh, knife line here, which is okay because we want to give this guy a little belt. So you can follow that line. I usually uh, make the belt at the same height as where the hand and the sword meets. So we'll do that and make him a big belt. So we have these little lines, so here I'll do a V cut and then remove the wood. And same thing here, change side so the blade can go in. Like this. And you just pop the wood as much as you can. And if you these little tidbits you can just make a little stop cut here so we have the top and then uh, here same thing it'll be cut like that I know you see I can't go there because my blade doesn't fit so I switch side and then I just make another one right there there we go I'll fix that part of the sword Swords are always a bit uh, unproportional, if that's a word, because the tip will be like that big, but it kind of goes inside, right? Like if I, if you look at this guy, it's like the sword is kind of in his pants, but it's fine. That's how we roll around here. So from here, uh, be pretty gentle because if you go too deep you will just break the carving so I give around like I don't know, a three quarter of cent half a centimeter I don't know and I just make a little 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 stop cut super gentle I don't push or anything then in an angle I come and I remove the wood and with this thumb I hold this part there's no strength here my knife is sharp enough so I just can come in and cut the wood super easily. 
So that basically split the sort of part of the body right there. Good. And then from here I could probably come in and remove a bit more. To flatten the bottom part. Okay. So we got uh, we got the front, pretty much. Still a lot to do, but uh, yeah. there's a good depth here. Yeah, <coughs> pretty good. Okay, so let's do that part. The little line that we have. I do a little stop cut, and then I carve 45 degree angle here. Create the card, same thing on the other side. Sometimes I carve from here inside out, and so now I'm from outside in. Just yeah. If you want the guard to be a little bit up or down in height, it's up to you. So yeah, create the guard like that. Then I go in and I just basically removing a little chip to split the guard inside this cut. Same thing from below. It's under the carving, so you don't have to go all nuts in it. And then the hand, I go, yeah, it's like, it doesn't have any angle, but it's not as flat. Maybe I can follow the line of the, the belt here somehow, but yeah, that's how I do it. I go from below, because the hand is obviously inside the sleeve. Good. And from here we can probably just uh, remove some corners, remove the sharpness. Okay. And from here in an angle I will just cut everything here. Remove the corner of the sword. Same thing here. Be pretty gentle with this cut because if you go too deep you will just split the wood because that's the end. Of the green, something here. You can also just take your blade like this in an angle and push, but I'll show you. You will then create a little cut here, <laughs> which is not too bad because you can just uh, fix it, but uh, that's why I usually carve in the angle here, following the line. You see the sword is not exactly uh, symmetrical at the end, but that is also fine in my book. Okay. Following that line here for the hand in the back, carve in, carve in. Let's switch side because I can't obviously cut here. This is in the way. Then we carve in an angle. There we go. So we got the hand. And here I can fix that ugliness right there. Will I make fingers? I have no idea. We will see later. Carve a little bit here inside. Okay. Then I will just remove the layer of wood at the top because Benza, as you might have heard me say a million times already, Okay, I'll do the same thing on the arm. Could go a little bit in detail already. I usually make a V cut in the middle here. Kind of create this little elbow thing. We can even do a little one here on the side, create some sort of fabric yeah, detail. Move that little layer. Okay, so that's that's one arm done. And then great for us. We don't have to do the other one. Yeah, I don't really think you will have a butt because that's kind of in here. No, that is perfect. Less stuff to carve. That's the lazy Viking. Okay. So what we will do now is, uh, will this guy have a helmet? Yeah, we'll have a helmet for this guy. 
So let's have him have short hair. So instead of going down, I will make... Uh, the line was here, right? So I think I will go a little bit up, maybe half a centimeter or something. So that will give him a, the back, the cloak here. There we go. And then I'll join these two also. Like that, so it goes up. And then same thing on this side. that if it's a bit uh, crooked or that is fine okay I will remove the little layer here because it bugs me when you do that always make sure that you're not going against the grain because you will probably remove more than what you want if you have to do that with your wood I don't know you might have the the cleanest, best, whatever, lind, lime. See, I'm against the grain here, so that will split up a bit, but it's it's fixable later. I can come back in on this side then. Okay. Great. Uh, Super simple with this cloak because we don't really have to cut anything. Show that ugly layer. Okay. So all this side, the only thing that you have to do is basically look at where the other arm is, and then you could have a little V cut there. So that's where the shoulder is, and then maybe the hand would be like at that height. Right, and since there's the hand or something, we could go a little bit more depth here, and maybe a little bit in the back too. Okay, should be a bit deeper there. It's a bit thin. Okay. Right. I have space for a crotch. Maybe you could do one V cut on this side here. Right there. So it kind of creates a little crotch, and then this guy probably has some shoes, right? Because we will see that on this side. So I will make. Maybe on this side first. Yeah, we could have a little butt for this guy. Because if the line was here, I will remove that with after him. If his butt was like right there, this part would be kind of in. So we can just probably make a V cut here somehow. Then just remove that wood here some depth so that sort of create a little little butt for this guy okay like so see there's a little in there so then I'll take I'll make a little V cut here make the butt more pronounced okay there we go and then from there, uh, let's give this guy some shoes. Something like that. And then V cut, V cut. There we go. So then we just need to have uh, some sort of a V cut here because we have the shoes in the front. 
And this might be tricky because I can't have my knives anywhere, so I will just go in an angle like right there. And same thing on this side. It's kind of hard to see, I guess, but it's just to create a little ledge. So also my paint will just stick to that part and not run all the way. Okay, so we got the shoes on one side. Now I just realized that the belt is here and then there's a little opening there. So we also need a belt. So we will make super small V cuts on each side. So, and then I need another one here. There we go. So when, if you paint, you will have a little, uh, little belt here too. Okay, let's just uh, with the tip of your knife. Just remove the sharp corners of the cloak everywhere you can. Like so, I think we could remove a bit more in the front. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit thin. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the only thing that is left now is the face. Uh, yeah, we said it will have a helmet, so let's make it simple. Uh, just do a classic helmet. So around a centimeter maybe, something like that. Just make a line like this. going down a little bit in the back so the helmet is sort of sitting on the head right so it's not straight straight it's going down a bit uh, and now I realize that I I always do one cut so we have this line from the beginning here that might disappear because you're touching the wood but I usually go from there and I do a one swipe cut can be deep can be not and then it's just flat in the face right there and uh, yeah, we could have him with a little nose blocker even. So let's do that. Up right there on the side. And then a little line like that. Okay. So we'll do one step cut here, one step cut there. Okay. Then we'll follow these lines here with step cut two and create a step cut at the bottom of the nose blocker. So here, because I also want to have the nose popping out a little bit. I don't know if I have an example. Yeah, I have an example with that guy. If you see, there's the nose coming out under the nose blocker. So we want to do that because it's cute. So we'll just make a little, little, little cut there. Okay. So from this angle, we will carve in. Remember, it's the same thing as the arm. You don't want the knife to go in the line. So take your time. And we just want to carve through right there. Like so. Same thing on this side. It might be trickier with this, how you hold the knife. But it's okay if you do more than one. Little by little. Okay. It's okay to come back in and fix it and everything. And create ugly cuts like what I'm doing right now. Okay. So we have the nose blocker. We can go with bit deeper though. Well, I want to go deeper, so there we go. Something like that. 
great. I'll go deeper on this end too. I'm trying to get there. There we go. Okay. So you see here, I think, this is longer than this. You see here I'm passing the line, not here, so I will try to fix that. I want to have this somehow symmetrical, but it's harder for me to cut with this grip. Because those, both of these lines should be pretty much symmetrical, because it's the center line we've done at the beginning. Okay, that'll do for now. So now the little nose, just below, we'll make another step cut like this. Then we'll carve through it like this. There's a little thing popping out. Okay. From there. Uh, we can just, it's really in the detail here, remove a little triangle on both sides. Like so. Okay, so you have a little, uh, a little nose popping out. Uh, under it I will just make one or two cut to flatten the face like this okay so as usual the cheeks now uh, we could give this guy is the helmet sitting on the ear or not yeah probably right yeah let's not go too wild so from the corners of the nose I'll make a little line in an angle like this like 45 degree or something and following the line that I carved here, we'll do the, the cheek. And then something like that. So you have the lines and then I do V cut. V cut, V cut. I love V cut. Here, like so, and from here we kind of have to go a follow through here because it's inside the middle of the wood, so we can't really put our blade. Maybe if I had a shorter blade, I could, but that's fine. That makes me practice this uh, follow cut. Pyramid cut, whatever you want to name it. Good, then same thing at this side. I will just remove this little part there. Great. And then follow. I always have a harder time on this side. That is what it is. Okay. We got the cheeks. Cleaning it up a bit. Okay, same thing on this side. Good. Okay. It's not super good though. Well, maybe a bit better. Okay, so I will just. Uh, Got that here, removing the pencil line I had at the beginning. Like so. Okay. So we got the nose and the nose blocker. Right there. For the eyes, because that's what we're doing now. I will draw a line like this 
and on this side. Okay. And then one going up. And basically create these little eyes that I do now. And then we'll do guess what? V cuts. Right here, right here, little thing in the middle, and then on the other side here. This is pretty important, that is sort of symmetrical. Like I always say that we don't really we don't really mind about symmetry, but uh for the eyes, it's a bit important because uh, you don't want to have uh, crooked eyes. And here, if your knife is going a bit too far from the eye, I kind of like what it does. It kind of gives like I don't know, like wrinkles or something in the face, and I don't really hate that. So yeah, whatever. It's your carving. Great. Yeah, this side is not super looking good, but whatever. Um, all right, let's keep on with the helmet. Just make a couple of stud cuts and carve through it from below. Follow the line you've done earlier. Going slightly down a bit towards the back. Now that we have the general shape of the helmet, I think I want to give him a little guard at the top too, so just creating more lines here, about a quarter centimeter or something. It's basically to follow the line that is under it. Make a couple of stop cuts again. Stop cuts here. Then you carve from above. Looks a bit weird right now, but we will uh, round everything up. So uh, it's always easier, like I said a billion times before, but uh, it's always easier to carve in a corner than flat. So every corner you will just give one big slice all around the helmet, like so, in an angle. Okay, so it should look a bit like that, which is a bit crooked at the top. But then you have a lot more angles and corners, so you just go around and then you cut everything up. Because every corner generates two corners. You can look at it from the top and see, see this is rounded here and this is super square there. So we'll just give him another couple of cuts. Yeah, seems good enough from there. So the top part, uh, what I do now is I go, if your knife is sharp, which I hope it is, I go against the grain like this make another little bit of angle at the top like so and then at the top top just to remove that 
I, I don't know why this is so hard, but this grip works really well. So then I just basically go a little in, 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 out, in, out. With an angle. And I just remove that little powder thing at the top. There we go. Okay. Then I will uh, remove these ugly lines of wood. Here and on the hair part. Then on that side, which was the ugly, ugly face. Almost there. Interestingly enough, from time to time, I will have to because we still see the pencil, but I could probably just erase that with my finger like this. Sometimes I leave the texture that I don't like for the beard because it kind of creates texture, so it's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, so mouth with these lines here for the cheek, I go in the middle following pretty much the same angle. Let me cut both sides, creates these little lines there. And I carve through them. And there we go. We got him out. And then the last thing, my V cuts for the beard. Usually a tree on both sides. There we go, so that's tree on this side. one thing we could maybe add or not uh, yeah we should separate these shoulder from the hairline I'll look a little bit better if I can cut because right now I'm not able to and then Thing on this side. That is pretty much it. Just looking around. You could just add a couple of cuts in the corners, which I like to do. Just to remove all the flatness, nothingness, and it creates a bit of. Uh, Maybe here even, since the butt is there, you can uh, maybe go a little bit wild and create a bigger one. Something like that. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Uh, that's this one that we've done right now maybe it will focus yeah but uh, the cloak on one side the sword the helmet with the nose blocker so that's the two other one I showed uh, before uh, you know I don't know if I can hold the three of them together and if they will focus but yeah. the new one is this one here and then please focus you can do it or not anyway so yes, that's kind of how it could look if you paint it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed, as usual. I hope it was not uh, too hard. I hope it was clear enough. It's, uh, it's. I'm, I'm trying to get better at explaining what I do when I carve. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you get into the flow of things and you don't read. You just want to get going. Um, so yeah. And yeah, maybe next time I could also... I carved this guy yesterday, which is some sort of a, a little bit more detailed. Uh, I haven't carved a shield in quite some time, so I decided to do another one. 
um, and he has more like this cloak attached with these two thing and it goes in the back and there's some little little thing in the armor in the front if you see it's kind of hard but yeah just some little stabs to make some sort of a breastplate and it's a pretty intricate to do but there's also these uh, eye guard here uh, so yeah maybe I'll do that next time we'll see so yeah I hope you enjoyed uh, if you liked it press like if you had any question comment anything put that down below and uh, yeah we will see each other uh, well in the next video let's hope it's next week if not that might be the week after bye bye